Today's 1990s Passive Matrix shenanigans are brought to you by Squarespace. But more on that in a bit. This is a 1993 PowerBook 165C. The C stands for color. In fact, it's the very first color Macintosh portable. Though these once coveted machines aren't very portable anymore with long dead batteries and only a modem for connectivity. So today, let's use a little bit of modern hackery to give this thing internal Wi-Fi. And we have a brand new homemade battery. So join me in my quest to be the most powerful mobile retro hipster. So stay tuned. And if you enjoy the absurdity of actually trying to use 30 year old technology in public, I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. Among my fellow vintage Macintosh enthusiasts, the PowerBook 165C is actually a bit controversial. Its color screen was a revelation at the time. It was the first laptop from any manufacturer to cram 256 colors into a mobile display. But that color came with enormous compromises. It only got about an hour of battery life brand new, and the display was hobbled by hardware like slow video memory that made the screen update excruciatingly slow. It's also a passive matrix display, which were muddy and ghosty even when brand new, although pretty common at the time. But as a showpiece of early 90s Macintosh innovation, this thing is undeniably cool. That's why we're giving this one two very special upgrades today. First, we're gonna use the new Blue Scuzzy V2 PowerBook Edition, which not only lets this thing boot from disk images on fast and reliable solid state storage, but it can actually give real internal Wi-Fi to this thanks to Danaport SCSI to Ethernet emulation. And to really let us hipster out and use this thing in public, we're gonna install this brand new homemade battery built by the incomparable JCS. Now, even though these blue SCSIs are available fully assembled, I actually bought the kit version because I think it's way more fun that way. So let's go back in time slightly and uh, bust out our trusty Sodermeister 3000. And while we're waiting for all the coffee I just drank to wear off a little bit, let me tell you about the sponsor of today's video, Squarespace. Create a fast, beautiful, and rich web experience for your business or brand using Squarespace's powerful all-in-one platform. It's really easy to get started. Like, say I wanted to build a website about my love for the forgotten, eye-melting beauty of Passive Matrix. I could build it in just minutes with Squarespace's new Next Generation Fluid Engine, which features powerful drag-and-drop technology and enables you to customize every detail of your customer's experience on desktop and mobile. That's on top of optimizing for SEO, managing a mailing list, watching your analytics, and much more. So check out squarespace.com slash action retro today for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use code action retro to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Now, if you're not familiar with Blue SCSI, it is an open hardware SCSI emulation device. Version 2.0 has lots of new features, including working with Raspberry Pi Picos as the controller, and the Pico W, which has a Wi-Fi chip and antenna built in. And paired with the latest firmware for this thing, you can emulate the, not incredibly fast, Danaport SCSI to Ethernet adapter. So yeah, indulge me for a few moments here and I will whip this thing together in no time. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And now I'm gonna flash the latest firmware onto this thing, which is incredibly simple on the latest blue SCSIs. You just download the file from the releases here on GitHub. Then we're going to connect this to the computer with USB and as we're plugging it into the computer, I'm going to hold this button down on the Pico 
And that actually mounts the blue SCSI as a USB drive on the computer. And I can drag the UF2 firmware over. And now this thing should blink block. It ejected itself automatically. And uh, yeah, there it is blinking. And this will have updated the firmware automagically. Okay, so I have a micro SD card formatted with XFAT and I've loaded some stuff onto it. I have two disc images. HD2 is a macOS 755 install on a two gigabyte drive. And HD3 is actually a disc image that Blue SCSI provides for the Pico W with drivers for the Dana Ethernet, well, what the computer will think is an external box, but of course it's internal to the system. I also have a blue SCSI dot INI. And in this file, I can put my Wi-Fi SSID and password, and it will bridge that connection into what the old Mac will think is ethernet. And for maximum mobility, I'm going to use a hotspot on my phone so we can actually go anywhere and browse the internet. And then one last thing we have to do is actually create a file called ne4.hda, which is going to stand in for the ethernet controller and put it at SCSI ID four. All right, time to disassemble the power book, which actually isn't that bad. And the hard drive is here on the bottom half, right up front under what used to be a screwed on bracket. Although it seems like maybe only these two screws are actually still attached to standoffs. The rest of them have broken off because they're plastic. All right, here's the hard drive. Huh, looks like this was replaced at some point, yeah. 7-1993, this was upgraded, I guess. And as for mounting this here, uh, well, at some point, maybe I'll 3D print something, but I'm a fan of jank, so double-sided tape. All right, before I put it all the way back together, let's give it the old smoke test. Oh yeah, happy Mac. Look at that, it's booting. Success. Okay, well, as is something of an unfortunate tradition with this channel, right as I got the networking working on this PowerBook 165C, it decides to give up the ghost, briefly displaying some lines across the screen and then, well, not booting at all. I spent quite a while trying to fix it and diagnose it, reseeding absolutely everything and resoldering some of the connections that could have cracked, but I gave up. And instead, I do happen to have this PowerBook 165, which despite having a much worse passive matrix grayscale display, does have the benefit of actually working. So let's take this thing out to our local independent non-chain coffee shop and see what it's like to be a technology hipster and try to actually use this thing in public.
So what's it like actually using the Wi-Fi in the Blue Scuzzy V2? Well, in the interests of your ocular comfort, I've installed it into something with an active matrix display, this PowerBook 540C, and uh, yeah, let's take a look at Netscape Navigator 2.02. And we are connected here with Open Transport and DHCP. So let's try a website that's, well, fairly simple. Frogfind.com, my search engine for vintage computers. All right, so yeah, it's not fast, but it's not unusably slow. totally usable. I mean, if we were doing something like trying to use actual Google with a more modern web browser, this might be a little bit slow, but honestly, for text-based browsing, not too shabby. <laughs> you can kind of see it load this image line by line just like the old days. Let's try my other website for old computers, 68k.news, which is Google News formatted for very old web browsers. Yeah, I mean, not bad. I mean, the news is all bad, of course, but the web browser and the internet connection not too shabby. And it's just awesome that these old machines can be connected to Wi-Fi using this very simple and rather inexpensive Blue Scuzzy V2. Okay, so that was quite the PowerBook adventure and uh, I think we've learned something today. Well, two things, one, these PowerBook 100 series machines are incredibly fragile and they're only getting worse with time. Pretty much all of them are gonna need some sort of repair at this point. And two, Blue Scuzzy is awesome. I love Blue Scuzzy, I've used it for a long time and uh, yeah, open source, can't recommend it enough. I can't believe I can go plug this into an old PowerBook and get on Wi-Fi. And I'll link down below to this battery as well. Very cool that JCS has created this and it seems to work well. I wish I could have tested the longevity of it in the 165C with the notoriously short battery life. I really think this, along with the Blue Scuzzy, would have given much better battery life at least more than an hour because, well, it didn't have to power that spinning hard drive. But in any event, if you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more shenanigans like this, please subscribe down below. And thank you very much for watching. And a special thanks to Alex Hoffman, Andrew Nicholson, April White, Camila Noseda, Chris Allegretta, Chris Biggs, Chris Calderon, Chris Nelson, Control Alt Reese, Daniel Hubbard, Frodo Jedi, Gaspar Heller, George Rosansky, Greg Rutke from Rutke Mods, Harris Brody, James Fryman, James Laurie, Jason Papaz, Jason Ezel, Justin Reed, Lyle Truid, Matthew Kroll, Paul Spencer, Ryan, Scott Cedarbaum, Scott Thompson, Sutek, Tom Woodfin and Unknown Soldier 41, who are my highest tiered patrons and all of my Patreon supporters for helping to make these videos possible.